All right, so I recently shot this video on my 100-day manifesting experiment, and I shared some of the interesting things that ended up happening in my life, but one of the interesting comments I got was my intuitive journaling technique. So basically, I just kept this little pocket journal for all the little intuitions that happened, because for this experiment, I believed that they were messages because of the things I'd asked, and I was supposed to act out on them. So in this video, I want to share a little bit about what I was doing with that journal and how you can start doing it yourself. What's up guys, Alex Hine here, author of the book Master of the Day. So the very first thing here, the first point, is that the point of this journal is to record your intuitions. Nothing else, right? The whole point is because there's often a rift between the heart and the mind, or whatever, wherever you want to place intuition. And it's almost like in Paulo Coelho's book, The Alchemist, where he talks about the boy kind of there's all these things on our mind, right? Like the judgments, the fears, what if it doesn't happen? What will my parents say? What will my friends say? But then your heart still wants to do something. Your heart is still like, I like that person, or I love this career, or I want to go to this place and I don't know why, but I just have a feeling that I should go there. And the thing is, there's this amazing story, this interview with Steven Spielberg, I think, where he talks about he calls the intuition little whispers. So there are these little whispers, which is how the intuition is. It's really soft. It's just like a, hmm. And it's super easy to ignore. While the mind will be like, no, 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 no. Don't do that. That's friggin' stupid. Your mom said you're gonna be broken. You're gonna be fat. You're gonna be single and ugly forever if you do this. So just don't do that, all right? But the intuition is where the magic is. So the whole point of me doing this journal was to shut off the mind and just record what my heart is getting really sappy. What my heart was saying, okay? What the intuition was being like, maybe you should do that. I don't, can't describe logically or rationally, but maybe you should do that. The whole book was disabling my mind and just tracking what my insides were telling me. So the second step here is, once you've got a little pocket journal, I'm just using a little pocket, I think a three by five hardcover moleskin, write down on one piece of paper your asks. So your asks, are basically the things you want to manifest, or the things you want to materialize, or the goals you're working on. So let's say you have three particular asks you're working on right now. You could say, I want to earn an extra 200 a month, I want to lose 10 pounds, and I want to meet someone that I can date. So what I would do is, I put these asks on one little piece of paper, I put it in the back of this little journal, and I review them twice per day. Now, this next philosophy has been kind of recounted in many different books and many different philosophies, the earliest of which is a book called Think and Grow Rich, where he talks about when you want something like this, the proper mindset is expecting it as if it will already occur, seeing it and visualizing it already completed, and the feeling, the key thing is the feeling you get from it. So let's say, for example, I want $200 more per month because that signifies freedom. And I don't have to worry about not being able to pay my rent, not being able to not get groceries that are healthy. And so I see myself going through this and I'm at my desk. I open my Bank of America app on my phone. I feel happy. I feel free. I don't feel like I'm a slave to money anymore. I don't feel stressed. So the key thing is going through these and imagining the feeling you get from them having already occurred. And the third step here, or really the core second step, is to write down every aha you get. So how do you actually know something is intuition and not just a thought in your mind or whatever? For me, the way I know is that it pops up and it's kind of like a, huh, that would be cool. Or wouldn't it be cool if, or I should do that. Or even just like, oh, that's an awesome idea. These are all intuitions. That's how they show up in my body. And they show up like here. They don't show up in my head anywhere. It's just like a, a chest, a stomach feeling. It's almost like this alive thing coming out of you. So the other day I was in Whole Foods and I was looking at a magazine and it was the face of Mark Sisson. He runs a website called Primal Blueprint or something like that. And on his website, Mark's Daily Apple with a primal approach to fitness and longevity, it just popped in my head like 10 years ago, he was just publishing content on the primal way of life. He had no business behind it. And as I'm beginning to also build out my future Dr. Alex presence, it made me think I should just do what he's done. Just begin building the presence, even if it's five, ten years out, and don't even worry about the business end. That was an intuition. I was like, whoa, that's a cool idea. So immediately, 
I popped out that journal and I wrote it down. Do what the Mark Sisson is of paleo. And that was an intuition. And then eventually what you're going to learn is that over the weeks and the months, number one, you're going to have a hell of a lot of these little intuitions that you can then start acting on. And you're going to see that they actually work. Cool stuff happens. But also, the more you write them down, the more you you hear, the more you listen to it. And so once you've proven to yourself that they're actually guiding you to something and cool things are happening, the more you will listen. And the more you want to listen, the more sensitive you become to that. So you meet this perfect person, but there's something weird that's off and you can't explain it. And your friends are like, dude, what are you doing? You're being an idiot. Like this person's a total catch, but you're feeling something weird. So, hey, maybe you're into the crazy stuffed animal spoon and weirdo. That's cool. But if your intuition's like, you know what? This is not going to go well. Then you run. So the intuitive journal will help you spot those little things and avoid crazies when you're dating. And then the fourth step is to act on these little whispers. And in my own life, the biggest, ironically, this is a big lesson, the biggest life shifts came from me from the little whispers, the intuitions, not from these big slaps in the face, not from like years long relationships ending, not from my best friend committing suicide, not from any of those things, surprisingly. It was from the little intuitions that like, some, I'm not happy and I don't know why I need to figure this out. Or I think this career, Chinese medicine, is my passion and my calling. It was not like popping up all over the place for me. It like, it popped up one day and I was like, huh, this is cool, but like my career? And then it just kept getting louder and louder and louder. All of the just exponential shifts in my life happened from listening to the whispers. And so that's very different from listening to logic and trying to plan everything. All right, guys, so I hope that helps. Before you go, leave a comment there below. Let me know what aspect of your life you want to change the most if you could listen more to your intuition. So I hope that video helped. The best way to stay in touch is to grab my free personal development and seven-day weight loss challenge at modernhealthmonk.com forward slash YouTube. And you can also check out my last and latest two videos here and here. And watch out for that weirdo stuffed animal spoon and creeper in... <laughs> and seriously, watch out for that stuffed animal spoon and weirdo, okay? You say, Alex, thank you.